I was just gonna send you an email. I thought like there was like a problem on my side. Hello. Hi, Professor. Hi, how are you? Good. That's good. So what do we have this morning? So like I wanted to do one more practice problem about the uh like the PKMs and go over those. Sure. Do you have one in mind? Um, I don't have a specific one, but like, just like the same format as the others, like, like a PKEQ problem from uh, an old yeah. test. Yeah, like the big, the the long one. Oh, the the one with the tripeptide in it. Yeah. All right. So let's. <clears throat> sorry. Let's go. Uh, here you don't see where I am, but just hunting down an old test, one that I'm pretty sure we haven't done before how about spring 15 that seems like a little while ago uh open okay not there yet part two coming up <clears throat> where are you part two there we go there's a tripeptide <clears throat> i got something stuck in my throat i'm sorry um Spring 15, coming up. I don't need the box, not for a COVID semester. No. All right, I haven't, share, I haven't shared screen yet, have I? Getting back no. in the swing here. Uh, there's the screen, here I am, and there's the question. And we'll just kind of take it from the top. All right. Okay. I'm being ignored by my computer. What can you do? Oh. Oh, this is not good news. <laughs> uh, maybe moving this over. I can't write with my finger either. Huh. All right. We're on a technical delay here. I'm going to turn this screen off. It'll go blank. It might need a reboot. I just hope the whole system doesn't need a reboot. Oh, there might be a cable that got unplugged from behind. Let's see, it says HDMI input. And the mouse, the mouse is active. Maybe it's not. Oh, there we are. All right, and then... Yay, we're in business. Okay. <laughs> uh, spring. All right. Take it from the top. Spring 15 T2. Here's where it gets confusing. It's part two of the exam. But this here is the third type of question in that section. So uh, that's just a mislabeling on my part. And on your test, it would say, you have to tell me what that question mark is. So let's just go from the top. And hopefully there's enough clues here that we can figure out all the PKAs. It's very important just to read these things carefully from the beginning. You're being told there are two protons diprotic. There are two protons on a species that has at most four acidic protons. What that says right there is that two of the protons are missing and we can cross them off. And let's just carefully say what happened when they were getting taken off. Of these four numbers, the first one that would be removed is the lowest number because that's the most acidic. And that would of correspond to this CO2H here. So I'll just kind of squiggle it here. And when it had a proton, I don't need to see all this on the test. This is just to help your understanding. When it was on there, it had a pKa of 1.8. It's not on there now. The next one to come off 
is the 6.1 and it's missing too. Do you know how I know? Well, we had a total of four when it was fully protonated and there are only two left as stated in the question. There's only one sp2 nitrogen in this molecule and it's this one right here. So when it had a proton and I'll just kind of do it in green here. So what do we have here? And and just kind of when it has a proton, let's do these protons that aren't there in black. When it has a proton, it looks like this. And its pKa was 6.1. There we go. And this will take a second. I got to save this file and get that out of here. And it won't take long. If I can figure out, yeah, computer is not keeping up with the teacher today. Must be Monday. Yeah, uh, no, sorry, and the teacher's not keeping up with the teacher either. Here we go. Boom. Okay, so those two are missing. We haven't even started the problem. And now we're ready to start the problem. We have to figure out, is our molecule pictured here going to act like an acid or a base? We don't even know that yet. So job zero was to cross off any spectators and replace their charges that they were balancing. Okay, that is the conjugate partner of the acid to the left. How do I know this is the acid? because it has the extra proton compared to its partner, which is missing its proton. Might as well put the PKB here. We've done enough of these problems that I don't think I need to show you parts A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There we go. So we got that. And acids, this is an acid, reacts with a base. Now that work we did earlier was helpful it told us which H came off first, 1.8. Which H came off second, 6.1. Where's the H going to go when we put it back on? The same place the last H came off. So this is the H you're putting on. Your pKa over here for question mark will be 6.1. The pKb for its conjugate partner, which is the molecule pictured to the left, 7.9, that's the pKb of that. And on your test, I need to know which species you're talking about. Many times I'll have a student put the pKb right under a pKa. What is your molecule doing? I need to know, is it a base or an acid? Don't say it's both, it's not. Okay, right, here we go. This molecule is a base. Bases react with acids. This acid becomes its conjugate base right there. This molecule, which is a base, becomes its conjugate acid, which you have to draw. Copy it very carefully, exactly everything you see, except make this part look like this. All right. And um, one thing about COVID, it does make you copy molecules more. And as an instructor, that is one of the first things you have to do to learn organic chemistry. Learn how to faithfully copy molecules with high fidelity, okay? Which means not making mistakes. And I think I will be incorporating that in post-COVID parts of this course. So we got to take the bad with the good. I'm always about that. And this is part of the good. All right. So as I'm, I better watch myself, right? Because I said faithfully without mistakes. And as I'm talking, that's when I'm going to start making mistakes. Now, do you think that was a mistake? No, that was not a mistake. I, that, I just got rid of the K plus. And that's supposed to be an eraser and it's not. Eh, okay. 
Computer's just having trouble keeping up. We're down to the part of the molecule right here. And I need to copy it faithfully, except that changes. And here it comes in green. So we go to the ring. And the ring goes up to a double bond. It goes over to an NH. Don't put the H there. Yeah, I gave you that clue for a reason. I want you to put the H on the sp2 nitrogen in chem 242. You'll learn why that one is a better nitrogen than the one above it. And it has to do with resonance and aromaticity. Don't worry about the aromaticity concept. Just do what I said, put it on the sp2 nitrogen. Uh, did we carefully, faithfully, with high fidelity, copy the molecule? Seems so. One, two, three, four, C with an NH3. One, two, three, four, C with an NH3. Carbonyl NHC, carbonyl NHC, up to a CO2 minus, down to a CH2 to a ring with the conjugate acid there. Okay, how are we doing on this problem? We have to tell the instructor which arrow is favored. Uh, I want to make sure there's no confusion here. This all this 6.1 has nothing to do with what's above it. It has to do with our molecule up there. Okay. The five on the last left tells us how to calculate pKEQ. We got a five for the one on the left. Uh, the pKA on the right side of the equilibrium is 6.1. Less reactive means the arrow that points towards the less reactive species is the one that needs to be circled. In this case, the arrow towards the 6.1, which is higher than the less stable 5. Point, uh, sorry, 5.0. And oh, no calculators, no calculators, negative 1.1 here. Yeah, just do the math backwards, 6.1 minus five and realize the, so the sign will be wrong. So yeah, 1.1. KEQ, and because we're not allowed calculators, I don't want you to try to estimate. Just write down what you would have to put in the calc, oh, sorry. Write down what you'd have to put in the calculator to get the right answer. The negative exponent of the previous answer. Negative of negative 1.1 is positive 1.1. And we did everything. We had to connect our partners. I think it's understood this is connected with that. I really don't grade your connection. I know if you put a pKa here and 14 minus its pKb over here that you know they're connected. And a five here and a 14 minus five, you know they're connected here with the, your math says you know they're connected. So really the connections aren't for the points. The math shows me that you know where the points are. And I went on a little bit, but uh, I think it was worth it. Big oh, picture, professor. was it good? Uh, yeah, so like, so what I'm I, the thing that's like kind of confusing me still is so for the diprotic form, right? Mm -hmm. And that means it has two protons, yeah. Right? The, the only two that are left are these two, and mm -hmm. one they're very close to 10. Are you surprised? I'm not because they're both ammonium ions, and it even tells you which one the nitrogen on the carbon, one away from the carbonyl is this one. And the 9.0 must be the other one, but that wasn't your question. I'm sorry, I digress. So, the so after you remove those two, right? The two are uh, yeah. The 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 first one that came off was right here, yeah. and the yeah. second one that came off was right here. That's the next yeah. one that's coming on because of the two bases that you have. And the conjugate two, base of this with a pKb of 7.9, and the conjugate base of this has a pKb of 12.2, which is nowhere near as strong a base as 7.9. So since this one is a, what's it called? Uh, the, this is the base of, on the left side. This is and the then strong, yes. To, yeah, we established that by figuring out what species that, this was, an acid or a base. Has the protein since it has more than the other one right yeah this has more protons than the other one so the roles are acid base acid must react with base so using a pka for this molecule would show that you don't understand acids and bases and you'd be on the wrong foot you got to tell me you know this is a base and that's right from the beginning you know it's a base so yeah so since this is the base right 
Yeah. You would need to add the add a new one, like a new proton to it, or not yep. proton. And like you have to put it in the right spot. That's yeah. where the whole that's where your two points comes from, right here. Okay, and then so let's say, uh, if they if it was like a different scenario where this yep. was an acid, yeah, right? then you'd have to take off the nine before the ten point five. The mm -hmm. two. If this had to act like an acid, which would be a, a great question, easily manufactured right now. Why don't you put the CH3CO2 minus here and its conjugate acid CH3CO2H here? And then you have a brand new question worth exactly the same amount of points. Do you want to do that as our next question? Yeah. I think that's a fantastic idea. Here it is. It's even going to be in the same segment. Watch how fun this is. Okay. Control paste. Look at this. Look at this. And then we there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to try to trick everybody into thinking it was like this all along, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right. Let's see what kind of a potassium I can round up here. Big K. Yeah. And make it, uh, I don't know. What do you think? 24. Make it bold. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's a little obvious. Obvious is good sometimes. And that one, uh, which one? I want the one on the left to be the base, and I'm going to change that to an H right now. Uh, uh oh, will it let me? Yes, it will. New question. It's an entirely different question, is it? Let's take it from the top. Let's pretend we don't even know we did the other one. What is our first job? I'll even approach it slightly differently. I'll do what I should have done first the other time. Oh, here. Since it's a brand new question, don't we need a blank version? I don't even know what I did. That was just some weird, no, some weird stuff. There. Copy, new page, paste. Now we take it from the top and you got a blank one to practice from. Uh, why don't we take off all the spectators? This one, we got uh, that one. There we go. And we're, hey, the same start. Um, we know two of the acids aren't relevant. Uh, this one's gone and this one's gone. Same reason as before. Diprotic, four pK is given. Two protons have to be missing. Uh, now we're establishing that the one on the left is the acid. pKa equals 5.0. pKb of its conjugate partner, 14 minus 5.0 is 9.0. And bases react with acids. This is a more direct question than the previous one. I'm looking at the two pKa's that are remaining and asking myself which one reacts first. There's only one right answer. A nine reacts before a 10.5. The pKa of the species is 9.0. And the pKb of its conjugate partner is 14 minus 9.0 equals 5.0. And we got to figure out which of these ammoniums has the nine and which is the 10.5. We're told the one on the carbon, one away from the carbonyl carbon is a 10.5. And the other one must be the 9.0. pKa equals 9.0. Yeah, my eraser, there we go. And the 10.5 is irrelevant in this question. Okay, so take this H off please and copy the molecule faithfully with high fidelity. And that'd be H2N on the top. No plus charge comes to CH2, one, two, three, four times, one, two, three, four, goes to NH3 plus. It doesn't matter left or right. 
and goes to carbonyl, goes to NH, goes to carbon, up to a carbonyl with an O minus, and down to a CH2, C double C in a ring, and H. Please, no changes down here. There we go. And that's, that's what you need there. That whole deal, that molecule has that PKB, uh, PKEQ equals the acid on the left is now 9.0. The acid on the right is 5.0. And KEQ is 10 to the negative of that answer, which means equilibrium favors the left side a lot more than the right in this one. Yellow doesn't show up very well. Left arrow. I will do my best to separate the arrows a little better, although you're copying them, so it doesn't really matter. I really only need you to copy the arrow that's favored. If I just see one arrow on your test, I assume that's the one you circled. How's that? And there we go. Did we do all the parts? Pretty sure we did. So very good question. I hope it was a good answer. Yeah, thank you. All right. So we're going to stop this segment and I'm going to come right back in about five. And is there a problem that you want me to work on getting on the screen before we come back or, or a general kind of idea of a problem? Yeah, probably just like a general idea. That's like basically all I have at this point. <laughs> which, which general idea? I have it in my notes. Just oh, so for stereo isomers. Mm -hmm. So I felt like when I was doing them, I I think I got one of the uh, one of the stereo centers wrong. Oh, then but, that's going to probably carry through on all your other examples because yeah, we we base all of our answers on off the single one, single switches and double switches. Mm -hmm. So you, you gotta be really careful on the first one and don't make a mistake there. Yes. Yeah, so but worst case scenario, what what is the worst damage there when you get one stereo center wrong four times on an eighteen point question? You lost two points. It's not the end of the world, right? Sixteen yeah. out of eighteen is not gonna not gonna fry your A. <laughs> oh no! Uh, the acidities, the increasing acidities and in bases and stuff. I yeah. think that something. So like. We'll just do that when we come back. Okay, we'll do that. Do you have a specific one or just, well, I want me to hunt one down or how do you want to do it? Oh, we can do the one from the same test we just did. Uh, Spring 15? Yeah. Sure. This one looks hard. Well, I'll go find one. All right. Thank we'll you. See you soon.